It is time to take a look at a few more motherboards for the new AMD Ryzen CPUs that just launched. And here I have three different models from Gigabyte. So I have the X670 Aorus Elite, I have the X670E Aorus Master, as well as their flagship model, the X670E Aorus Extreme. So without further ado, let's check them out. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their brand new Dominator Platinum RGB memory. These super fast DDR5 6000 memory kits are specifically made for AMD and their Ryzen 7000 series CPUs. They feature a stylish aluminum heat spreader with DHX technology that keeps them nice and cool under load, offering a smooth and stable performance with a lot of room for overclocking. And they also come with 12 customizable Capellix LEDs that you can control with their IQ software and easily sync up with your other Corsair components. So check them out using the link in the description down below. Let's start with the X670 Aorus Elite AX, and this is the only non-e-board that I have so far. And the difference between the e and non-e-boards is that with the e-boards, uh, you're guaranteed to have both a PCIe Gen 5 slot for your GPU and for your SSD, and that you can use them simultaneously. Now, on the non-e-boards, uh, you don't get both. It is also one of the few motherboards currently listed under $300 on Newegg, and keep in mind, uh, these new boards have just launched and I do expect the prices to go down over time. But yeah, at $290, it is one of the cheapest boards you can get right now. Visually, it is a pretty decent board. It has a standard ATX size, you get a lot of big metal covers, and I think the gray color scheme would fit really well with most other hardware. Power delivery comes through 16 70 amp power stages, which is actually enough to run a Ryzen 9 7950X with a light overclock. But considering this board will more likely be paired up with a Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7, this will be more than enough. In terms of connections, it includes four M.2 slots, with one of them being PCIe Gen 5, and all of the M.2 slots have these convenient little clips instead of screws, which makes the SSD installation much easier than before. There are two addressable RGB headers, three RGB ones, you get a Type-C connection, and you actually get two internal USB 3 headers, which is pretty rare to see on a lower position board like this one. So this one will be a great choice if you have a case that has four USB 3 ports on the front panel. Now, like other X670 boards around this price point, you don't get a postcode, but they did actually include some simple physical buttons. The main PCI Express slots are Gen 4, they're not Gen 5, which is not really a problem at the moment because currently uh, GPUs don't really use Gen 5 and not even the upcoming NVIDIA 4000 series will use it. But AMD has promised to support this platform until at least 2025. So having a PCI Gen 5 slot for the future when Gen 5 GPUs become a reality uh, might not be a bad thing. I do like that they made the clip on the expansion slot a bit larger and a bit higher up, so it is much easier to reach it to remove your GPU. Now, the board has only five fan headers total, including the one for your CPU cooler, and this might be fine for some builds, but many ATX boards have six or more, so if you plan on adding more fans, you need to make sure you grab a splitter cable. The ALC 897 audio chip is a big cost down as well, and that is a very low budget chip that doesn't really belong on any boards over $200 in my opinion. So if you do get this one, either buy a simple USB DAC or just use a USB or a wireless headset to uh, avoid the internal audio of this completely. The rear I.O. is pretty impressive with 13 USB ports total, including a 20 gigabit one, but there aren't any USB 4 connections, so there is no Thunderbolt support. And also, there's no optical audio out either. You do get a 2.5 gigabit LAN and Wi-Fi 6E with an external antenna, which is about the same as most $300 to $500 boards have. So even though there are clearly some corners cut here, I still do think that for a lot of users, this is more than you reasonably need. And seeing how expensive most of these new boards are, I'm happy that a relatively cheap board still feels pretty reasonable. Now the X670E Aorus Master is a really big step up as this board launches at around $500. Uh, the master instantly feels very high-end, and I think the design is just stunning. It has a lot of metal covering the front of the board and a full metal backplate as well, which is something that you don't even get on a $700 ASUS Hero board. 
Uh, you also get the postcode and proper buttons this time, so this should be a very good hobby board to play with. If you put this in a case though, you need to remember that this is an extended ATX board, so it is wider than a typical ATX one, and you will need to make sure that it fits. The power delivery gets an upgrade too, and this board has a 1605 amp power stage setup uh, just for the CPU, and then four more for the memory and SOC. And just like earlier masters, Gigabyte put a proper finned heatsink on top of the VRM, so realistically, even a 7900X or 7950X uh, with a serious overclock uh, will be just fine. Feature-wise, uh, you still get four M.2 SSD slots, but this time around, two of them support Gen 5, and the main PCIe slot is also Gen 5, so you will be ready for uh, whatever the next generation of GPUs brings. And similar to the ASUS boards, you get a button on the side to easily release your GPU from the slot, which is great, especially if you have a very large, massive tower cooler that is blocking the space above your GPU. You get 10 fan headers, 3 RGB headers, 2 addressable RGB headers, uh, you get a USB Type-C and again two internal USB 3 headers. On the back there is a total of 12 USB ports compared to the 13 on the Elite, but most of them are actually a bit faster. Again, there is no USB 4 support, which I think should be included on a board that costs $500. Audio is better with an ALC1220 chip and you get an optical out this time around. So overall, um, other than the USB 4 and some niche features like a 10 gigabit LAN, for example, uh, this board has pretty much everything. But then we have the Extreme. And to be honest, I was a bit surprised to see that the Extreme looks so similar to the Master. Uh, some earlier top tier Gigabyte boards had some really standout designs. Um, if you remember the Z590 Extreme, for example, that had those heat pipes and a full metal block just covering the entire PCB. And uh, don't get me wrong, I still think that this Extreme looks great, but it also just looks like a slightly darker version of the Master. Coming in at $700, it is also not as expensive as some previous Extreme boards, but still $700 is a lot of money and you really need to have a good reason to spend that much on a motherboard. Now, for the most part, uh, this board is actually the same as the Master, but there are some small differences. The Extreme also has four M.2 SSD slots, but all four are Gen 5 compared to the two on the Master. The VRMs get a slight bump to 18 plus 4, 105 amp power stages, uh, but Master was already an overkill in my opinion. And on the back I.O. you still get 12 USB ports, but the 2.5 gigabit LAN is replaced by a 10 gigabit LAN. So that is great if you have a 10 gigabit LAN at home and something that would actually cost you uh, 50 to 70 dollars extra if you had to buy an add-in card later. Unfortunately, this board also doesn't support uh, USB 4, so you won't be able to use super fast external drives and Thunderbolt 3 devices. And in my opinion, that is a big shame for the highest position motherboard in their lineup. You do get, however, an external DAC for the improved audio, so Gigabyte is definitely adding some extra value here. So I think if you really need a DAC, the 10 gigabit LAN and the four Gen 5 SSDs, it might justify those $200 or so over the master. If not, there is actually no need to spend this much. When it comes to the BIOS, it seems like Gigabyte has made some big steps in recent years and their current BIOS is pretty easy to work with because they've taken on most of the convenient features that we've seen from others over the years. Uh, they don't usually lead in terms of BIOS features, but they have been able to catch up to some popular features quickly. So now they also have that uh, dynamic OC switch feature, for example, where it will automatically swap between the AMD PBO and your manual OC, depending on uh, which is best for the current workload. And they also did a really nice thing to let their BIOS supply both the new AMD Expo profiles as well as Intel XMP profiles from whatever memory you put on. So that should make it easier to get non-AMD specific memory kits to run at their rated speeds. But this kind of still needs a lot of testing to see if it actually works well, as I haven't had time to uh, dive into memory compatibility just yet, but it is definitely, in my opinion, a very attractive idea. Anyway, 
between these three boards, the $700 Extreme is a bit ridiculous and since it only has a few specific upgrades over the master, you should only consider it if it just happens to perfectly fit uh, your use case. Now the Aorus Master, however, does look like a great all-around board for enthusiasts with pretty much everything you might need and it does look like a good almost full feature alternative to the ROG Strix and Hero boards I talked about in my uh, previous video. And depending on the prices in your region or your brand preference, I think you can just go either way and not make a mistake. And the Elite AX. Now the price is going to be very important for this board to make sense because right now I would say it's in a bit of a tight spot. Uh, in the US, the Asus Stuff, for example, costs only $40 more and that one gives you the PCIe Gen 5 for your GPU that you might need in the future and you get better audio. So if you want to save money and you don't care about these two things, Elite still might make sense. But on the other hand, if saving money is more important to you, uh, cheaper B650 and B650 E boards are on the way as well. So uh, we'll have to see how those will compete and that might make it even more difficult for the elite in my opinion. So it is up to Gigabyte to make sure that the price becomes and remains even more attractive for this elite to thrive. Now. That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do leave a comment down below and do subscribe to this channel to never miss an upload. Bye all and see you in the next one.